machines Big and mighty machines Working for you, doing mighty things there Mighty machines Lifting and pulling and flying so high Building and building up to the sky You can watch them all day and never know why they're Mighty machines Hear them roar, watch them soar Sit right down and see There are stories to enjoy For every girl and boy Mighty machines Big and mighty machines Working for you, doing mighty things there Mighty machines Working for you, doing mighty things there Mighty machines This is the steel mill, kids. One of the biggest type of industrial plants in the world. And this is what gets made here. Slabs of steel. Look at this one. It's red hot. This slab is heading out to the yard to cool off outside. Look at them all, just like a stack of pancakes. Except that they're rectangular and made of metal. But this is where I come in. I'm a slab hauler, and my job is to move all those slabs around. And they're not only hot, they're really heavy. I'm a funny looking machine, don't you think? You've probably never seen a machine like me before because I'm too heavy for the regular road. I just work inside the steel yard. I'll show you how strong I am. Watch me pick up some slabs right now. I drive right over top and straddle the slabs. That way I can distribute the weight over my entire body. My cab is way up here so I can see. Those are my hydraulic pincers. I've got four of them. They expand at the top so I can pinch the bottom of the slabs. And look at that. I can lift up the whole stack of slabs just by pinching the bottom one. What a pinch! Not only can I pick up the slabs, but I can move with them. I need six big wheels to carry the weight. See my tires bulge? That is from the weight of all the steel I'm carrying. You're going to see lots of exciting things here in the steel mill, kids. I'll be your guide. I know everyone here in the mill, and I know all about how they make steel. First, let's go and meet Dozer. He works on the huge piles of coal. So, kids, any idea what this stuff is that I'm pushing around? It's not dirt. It's ground-up coal. That's right, coal. It's messy and smelly, and I just love to push it around all day. My caterpillar tracks help me dig right in. I made this big pile. My job is to keep room in the pile as all the coal gets used up. Oh, and on the back I also have my big rippers. They're great for digging in deep and breaking up the lump so I can push it more easily. I work here every day with my partner, Scraper. There he is on top of the coal pile. I push up the coal so it's easy for him to scrape up. 
Hey, Scraper, can you spare a minute to explain what you're doing? Sure. Boy, Dozer sure has made the hill high this time. Great view from up here at the top. I've put my blade down, and I'm scooping up the coal and storing it in my big holding bin. I can hold a lot. One scoop, and I've got a belly full. <laughs> Scraper and I work as a team, don't we, Scraper? Yep. You push, and I scrape. See you later. This is where I drop off my load. Look at the coal pour out of my bin. And where is it going? Down through a grate to a conveyor belt underground. Sometimes I have to mash the coal dust down with my belly or squash it down with my big tires. Get down there. Oh. That'll do it. This coal is going to be turned into coke. Oh, no, not the coke you drink, but a special type of fuel for the blast furnace. Maybe Slab Hauler can take you over to the coke ovens. They're in this big building behind me. Now I've got to head back for another load. Yoo-hoo, kids. Here I am down here on the road. I'm going to take you over to one of the coke ovens. See those piles that look like rocks? That's the finished coke. And these are the coke ovens. We use a lot of coal at the steel mill. But first we have to cook it so it will burn much hotter in the blast furnace. We do that in the coke oven. That's Pusher. He'll explain. They call me Pusher, kids, because that's my job. Just give me a second. Once I open the oven door, I can't stop to visit. I've got to get that stuff out of there. See how hot it is? The coal goes into all these tall, skinny ovens from the top, and then it's heated to about 2,000 degrees centigrade. That's a lot hotter than your oven at home. My special arm pushes all the way through the oven and the coke falls into a quench car on the opposite side. Woo-hoo! Man, that's hot! Okay, Pusher, that's all of it. All right, Quencher. Kids, that's Quencher. He's the locomotive that is catching the coke in that open railway car. The coke is so hot coming out of the ovens that it's on fire. My job, I put the fire out. I push the rail car filled with the hot, hot coke down this railway track to the quenching tower. That's the tower down there. Water pours down from the quenching tower and... See that? Whoosh! That's steam. It sure is hot. But the water puts out the fire and cools down the coke. I like to call the quench tower my little cloud making machine. Once the fire is out, I just roll back again and let the coke cool down. When they cool down, the lumps of coke go to get sorted into different sizes. Then, it's ready to go into the blast furnace. And there's the blast furnace. It's huge, 20 stories high. And look at all those pipes and things. I'm not allowed near the blast furnace. I'm too big. And it's too scary in there for me. Perhaps my pal here can tell us what goes on inside. Hi, buddy. Hi, what are you up to? Do you know what happens inside the blast furnace? I heard about it once. It's sort of like baking a cake or cookies, isn't it? You choose the proper ingredients, mix them up together, and cook it. Well, okay. What sort of ingredients? 
The main ingredient is the iron ore that arrives by ship in the form of iron pellets. It gets unloaded by that big crane called an ore bridge. That's a big machine. The bucket runs on a rail up above. A lot of cranes in the steel mill operate like that. Wouldn't you like to have one of those in your sandbox? <laughs> Inside here is the blast furnace. Those iron ore pellets and the coke get mixed up with some limestone rocks and fed in at the top of the furnace. The mixture cooks up really hot until the rocks and metal start to melt and then turn to liquid. It comes out as molten red hot iron pouring out from the bottom of the blast furnace. They collect it all in the torpedo cars. Make way, make way. I'm moving molten iron. Torpedo cars coming through. Hot stuff. I've got to think about safety slab hauler. You have to when hot metal is around. How come the torpedo cars don't melt with all that hot stuff inside them? They're lined with special fire bricks, just like a fireplace chimney. Oh, that's clever. Where are you taking them? I'm going to the steel making mill. He's heading over to steel making, buddy. Let's follow him. Great idea. Let's go. This big green building is the steel making mill. There are really cool machines in the steel making mill. <laughs> That's funny. It's so hot in there. Come on, come on. I'm coming. Boing, 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 boing. <laughs> well, locomotive beat us here. The torpedo car is already pouring the molten iron into the big ladle. The torpedo car simply rotates to pour out the iron. The worker is checking the ingredients in this iron. To make your cake or cookies, you have to put in exactly the right ingredients. Well, it's the same thing to make the kind of steel that you want. There, finally the torpedo car is empty. We're almost ready to make steel! Wow, that ladle's hot! Don't get close. Okay, we've got our molten iron ready, but there's one more important ingredient in our recipe. Scrap steel. Ever wonder what happens to old cars and engines and all the other bits of metal that's not wanted anymore? A lot of it ends up in scrap, like the stuff in this yard. And it gets added to the molten iron. Steel mills have been recycling for ages. See that huge crane? We call her Electro, because she operates an electromagnet. I love watching her work. An electromagnet is pretty handy, because I can pick up anything that has steel in it. These are a couple of scrapped cars. But we get all sorts of good stuff here. Well, let's see what these trucks have brought me. When I send electricity into the big round piece there, it turns it into a powerful magnet. When the electricity is cut off, it isn't a magnet anymore. Watch this. Up you come. This is sheet steel that came from a factory. In this scrapyard, there are different types of metal. I know where every type is stored. So when they are making new steel, they tell me what type of scrap they need, and I give it to them. It all depends on the recipe. A little of this, a little of that, in just the right amount to get the type of new steel that they want to make. See that? 
I just cut off the electricity and the metal fell into the scrap bucket. Hey, that steel shredded so fine, it looks like hair. In you go, too. Well, this scrap bucket's ready. The scrap bucket train will take it directly into the steel making mill. It's a train operated by remote control using a joystick. has to be turned around on this turntable so that the bucket gets in the right position to be picked up. Look up, way up, and find the crane that does that job. Are you ready, bucket crane? Here I come. I move only as fast as necessary when I'm picking up a big scrap bucket like that. My giant hooks slip right under those knobs. Then another hook catches on the back of the bucket. That's it. Nothing to it. If you think that Electro is strong, I can lift ten times or more than her. <laughs> Not that I'm bragging. Hold on there a minute, Bucket Crane. I've got to get the ladle out of the way. Sorry. That's Ladle Crane. He is carrying the big ladle of molten iron. I have to wait until he gets out of the way before I can move over to the furnace. The two of us have to work together because we run on the same set of tracks. Okay, all clear. Thanks. That's the furnace where I'm going to empty the scrap bucket. I just slide into position here and use the hook at the back to tip it up. The scrap is sliding out into the furnace. Little more. There's my operator. He's done this lots of times. Good. The bucket is empty. Now I'm going to get out of the way so that ladle crane can come in and empty the iron into the furnace. Okay, your turn, ladle crane. Thanks, bucket crane. That's my operator. He sits a way up high too and works my controls. He knows all of my moves. Moving into position. I only connect the smaller hook at the back when I'm ready to pour. That's for safety. Oh boy, are you kids ready for a show? Check this out. Woo Look at the sparks fly like fireworks. This is the furnace where everything comes together to make the steel. There are all the right ingredients for making the cake. Molten iron and scrap metal in just the right amounts to make the type of steel that the customer wants. Everything is going to melt together and cook. There, I finished the pour. Steel is a lot harder and stronger than iron, kids. That's why it is used for so many different products. I'm just going to back away and bring the ladle upright. Boy, those fire bricks are still red hot inside the ladle.
See all those cables on my hook block, kids? Well, that's what makes me so strong. I can lift 450 tons, and all the weight is carried by the cables. Awesome. It sure is impressive how all the elements are put together and cooked to make steel. But let's zip around to the other side of the mill and you can see how the steel comes out. Duck your head. Now you're on the other side of the furnace. And that's an empty ladle being pushed into position under the tapping hole in the bottom. The furnace rotates and pours out the molten steel that's been cooking inside it. Look at it all flowing into the ladle. Now we've got steel. Look at the shower of sparks. Wow! Don't panic, everything's under control, it's just the heat. There, the ladle's full. Moving it slowly prevents splashing. Of course, there are no people around the ladles of molten iron and steel. It is way too hot and dangerous for them. Only machines can do a job like this. And right on time, here comes the steel crane. I've come to get that ladle of steel. Yup, that's my job. They call me Steel Crane because I move around all the ladles of steel in this part of the mill. It's important work. My hooks are going to just grab on there. Here she comes. They always sound the siren when something big and hot is being moved in the mill. Can't be too careful, you know? And now, for my next magic trick, I will turn this liquid steel into solid slabs, all in a puff of smoke, or steam. Magic? Eh, no, not really. Actually, I poured the steel into a big mold to give the slabs their shape. All that steam is from the water we need to cool things down and make the steel solid again. These slabs come out in one long, continuous piece from the caster, and they're still hot, just like a cake when it's taken out of the oven. Hey, a slab cake! That's a joke! <laughs> the cutting torches slice off the slab at just the right length. A cutting torch has to be even harder than the steel it is cutting. I wonder what that slab will become. Cars? Trucks? Washing machines? Uh, who knows? Off you go now. Each slab gets its own code number by the robot. That way, slab hauler can find each one out in the yard. Oh, hi, kids. You saw the steel slabs right after they were made in the mill. And here they are, stacked up in the yard, ready to go. Up you come! Soon, these slabs will be converted into all sorts of different products. Automobiles, refrigerators, bicycles, steel beams that hold up buildings, rails for railways, thousands and thousands of different things that we use every day. Steel is one of the most useful products we have, and it all starts right here in the steel mill. I'm just moving these slabs into the rolling mill. That's where we make them into something easier for our customers to use. Those are coils of steel. The slabs have been put through a rolling machine. It works much like a roller for rolling out pie shelves. It rolls the steel over and over, back and forth, until the steel is as thin as a slice of bread. Once it's the right thickness, it's coiled up, like those coils in the yard. That's the coil crane over there. 
I'd introduce you to him, but he looks pretty busy loading the coil transporter. Hi there, slab hauler! Hey there! Where are you taking the coils? One of our customers needs some coils right away. Coils are always in demand. I'll talk to you later. Well, kids, it's just about time to change the shifts and let my driver go home. I'm so tall, I have to let down my ladder so he can climb down. Steel mills never shut down. Did I tell you that? 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're always making steel. So kids, it was nice to show you around. And the next time you drive in a car or open the refrigerator door, think about how it's made from steel in a steel mill just like this one. Bye for now. Mighty machines, big and mighty machines, working for you, doing mighty things there. Mighty machines, lifting and pulling and flying so high, building a building up to the sky. You can watch them all day and never know why they're mighty machines. Hear them roar, watch them soar, sit right down and see. There are stories to enjoy for every girl and boy. Mighty machines, big and mighty machines. Working for you, doing mighty things there. Mighty machines. Working for you, doing mighty things there.